Welcome, everybody, to our presentation today on job clubs. We will get started right off the bat with finding out why you are participating today. So if you want to answer the poll question here, you have a choice of either being a job seeker, a workforce professional, you need some help getting your own job club going, or you are a community partner and are just interested in the resources available to job seekers in your community. Now, what we want to do is we want to keep all of our questions in the chat pod related specifically to job clubs. And I see a question in there about Wagner Pizer Social Security match file. That has nothing to do with our presentation today, Mirage. So keep your questions on point. We're going to only be talking about job search and job clubs and how do they help you get back into the workforce more rapidly. So now what I'm going to hide this um, poll question here. And we're going to move on with our presentation. And the, these uh, introductions are in the PowerPoint presentation, so they you can read up a little bit more about Jan and Jim. Jim is with the Tug Career Services in St. Charles, Illinois, and they've been around since 2002. And Jim has a very professional background in engineering and sales, but he found his niche with helping people get back into the workforce. Jan also has a very professional background. A lot of hers was in HR, which is a perfect fit for what she's doing now with the Career Resource Center up in Lake Forest. So thank you both for joining us today. I'm delighted to be here. Looking forward to it. <clears throat> Great. Now let's get started with the meat of our presentation. And let's talk about what is a job club. And Jim, I'm going to start with you. Tell me about a couple of these things on this bulleted list that a job club provides people with. Well, I think, you know, uh, what, what, what the, a job club provides is a uh, for, for a job seeker or somebody that's looking uh, possibly un underemployed, it provides them a sense of purpose. Uh, we're going and we're going to find out a particular aspect. Uh, we, uh, it also provides uh, a sense of uh, enthusiasm uh, because there are, are others that are participating in the same uh, probably have the same questions, the same thought processes as, as you do. So there is a sense of support that comes from this. Great. Jan, you want to talk about a couple of the bottom items there? Well, I, you know, just in general, besides the bottom items, you know, it, you're not alone in this process. And so, so Jim's talking about a sense of purpose. Yeah, absolutely, because a lot of times you think you're out there alone and you're the only one, and, you know, you might not have a, a lot of confidence about your job search. So certainly all of the items listed here, um, but sometimes there are training opportunities that are also available. Um, the center here does a lot of LinkedIn training, and we do some um, classes, and so many of the job clubs will also have speaker programs. Um, there may be a way to evaluate your skills when you talk to folks, or they can be referred out. Uh, but I definitely think in terms of networking, which is one of the items, it really expands your connections because there are people from all disciplines and all industries that come to job clubs. And so it's a ready-made network with you not having to go out and find it. And we do have a question about what is a sounding board. So I know that Jim and I had a conversation about this. Uh, a sounding board gives you the ability to bounce your ideas off of somebody else, and it may be in a professional arena, or it may be somebody that's in the same boat that you are. What else can they use that sounding board for? Well, I think, um, you know, in, in I've had individuals uh, bounce ideas off the group. Uh, for instance, they've had a, uh, uh, they've gotten a, uh, 
an offer for a job, but they also at the same time was offered a contract position. Uh, the contract position paid quite a bit more, and uh, the, the, the particular job that they were offered was they were lukewarm on it. So here was an opportunity they, where they brought it to the group and they says, hey, help me in my decision making. So it was kind of like a sounding board. Uh, or in other instances, somebody uh, is practicing their uh, elevator speech. Here's an opportunity in a non, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a very warm environment because nobody there is chastising anybody. They want to help. It's a very helpful environment. So you can bounce off your ideas uh, on your elevator speech with other individuals, and they're going to give you creative uh, input. Right. Right. And, I, and Dee, I would just add to that, you know, when you're using a, uh, someone to talk with, you're going to get an objective view. These people are typically not paid to help you. They aren't vested in anything else. So if you're having a dialogue with someone who's at a career center or a job fair, they're going to give you their best suggestion or they're going to, um, you can ask them questions and they can ask you questions and it will help you formulate maybe direction. A lot of times people don't know what their focus is and so when you're talking with another person to help you get to that place, you can say, well, I'm thinking this and I'll say, well, why that? And so it's really a dialogue. Um, it also may be just a, I think I'm doing this right but I don't know how, whether I am or not. So you might get affirmation uh, when you're using someone as a sounding board. So I, it's a wonderful tool to, to help people through any process. Great. Now, we also have a question here. Um, what kind of support services? Well, and we're not, these aren't supportive services like you might think of, like child care and, and transportation assistance. The support that you get is more from the other people that are in the same situation that you are, that the organizations can recommend resources to you that you might be able to find. So there's another question on, on the uh, chat pod, Jan, about assessing skills. And I know that you're a full-time organization there, so how do you help organizations through assessing skills? So we, do, we don't do assessment testing in-house, but we do refer people to the various resources to do that. But we will help people walk through self-assessment often, and sometimes it can be a dialogue. Um, we do have some books in-house. Uh, one of them, the What Color My Parachute, can be used to do a lot of self-assessments. Um, there are others that we use with that. But sometimes having a dialogue with a coach, when we have coaches in house or you know with a partner that you're using at a job club might help you just assess okay what value do I bring to an employer or what's my most important skill set or what makes me unique and different and that's all part of this assessment of who am I what do I bring to the table and how do I market myself to an employer if Great. that helps the process that, that does Let's move on to our next slide because I see some questions coming up um, in a chat pod that ha kind of have to do with what we're going forward with here. And as we're looking at why should we attend, um, Jim, why don't you start with a couple of these ideas? Well, I think the, uh, uh, within the, the, the Tug Group, for instance, uh, we never know who's going to show up. Uh, and and you can have every, anybody uh, at any point in their career show up at our job club, and we also have potential employers who will show up. Uh, and they utilize our group uh, to find out who's out there and who might be a good fit for their company. Uh, you know, we also offer a, you should attend, because in a lot of cases, the job clubs offer a, uh, they, they will have a subject matter expert come in and offer a key aspect. 
for instance, getting prepared for an interview. How do you brand yourself? Uh, and we'll talk about that particular aspect. And th those are tremendous tools. How do you use LinkedIn in your job search? What are some of the uh, evolving attributes that LinkedIn is, is offering to job seekers, particularly uh, on the free uh, level? Uh, you can learn about these things and also, as participants dialogue with each other, they do share job leads uh, and have the potential of opening up uh, uh, the potential of opening up uh, network opportunities into those companies because they may have a neighbor, they may have somebody that they had previously known in their career that would be a tool for you to utilize. Good. Jan, what do you think? Why should people attend? You know, I think one of the most important things for people to attend is to find out, you know, what's going on in the marketplace. Most people haven't been out there for a while, sometimes for a really long time. And so finding out, number one, what employers are looking for um, so that you know how to present yourself to an employer. How are they sourcing candidates? So, you know, are they using LinkedIn? Are they posting online? So that a candidate will know how to present themselves. Um, and what does a resume look like today? Um, how do you use LinkedIn? So it's really a matter of um, what's going on in the marketplace, how are employers and recruiters finding candidates, and how does a person need to present themselves well? Because typically what we find is most people go on line and apply for jobs all day long, um, which actually is not the most effective way of finding employment. Um, and, they, and they assume that they, they are really being successful. So I think just getting up to speed on what's going on in the workplace today, what the expectations are, are one of the best things you can get when you're participating. Right, right. There's a good way to spend your time, and then there's a better way to spend your time. So that's one of the things about that you learn from going to a job club. Um, let's move on to the next slide. So different job clubs handle things differently, but in most cases, they all con contain some aspect of networking, they all contain some aspect of learning, and they all contain some aspect of sharing. So if it's not necessarily right for me, it might be right for somebody else, so I'm going to share it. But let's talk about what happens at each of your locations. And Jim, let's start with you. Well, at, 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 at Tug Career Services, what we, uh, we essentially start off our meetings with a subject matter expert. Uh, in uh, this past Monday, we had two, uh, two speakers that talked about uh, communicating via email, via uh, or uh, verbal communication, uh, and how you go about it, and, uh, and how do you get the best impression. And it was very successful. Um, from there, and that could take an hour, an hour and a half of the evening, after which, we have a formal networking process where we all sit down, uh, depending upon the size of the group, it could be, could be two, three, four tables. And this gives the individual a chance to engage others in their job search. Uh, this, is, this is what I'm looking for, the size of the company. Hopefully, they share company names uh, that, that they're out looking for contacts in. Uh, and then it also provides them the opportunity to say, this is how I can help you in your job search. And then, you know, uh, from that point on, uh, we would hope that individuals would get together with each other uh, to further their networking. And this could be over at a uh, uh, later on in the week, could be via uh, an email or connection through LinkedIn or other other forms and mechanisms. 
Sure, sure. We do. Jan, you want to talk about what happens in um, in uh, career the CRC? At right, absolutely. So at Career Resource Center is a little bit different. Um, we are open five days a week. One of them is an evening. So we have uh, comprehensive services that cover pretty much anything you would need when for a job search or being underemployed or even in your own career. Um, so we have all the components. Um, so we don't do it all at one time, once a week. Um, so we would provide someone with a tour of our facility so they understand what's available. And we actually have coaches that you can visit with in private consultation throughout your search. We have the educational component or the learning component. Um, and we probably have at least two programs every single week going on here. And they're usually 90-minute programs. And they might be how to pass the phone screen. It might be how to do LinkedIn. It might be. Um, um, we even have some things like we had one called turning your passions into a reality. So we have professionals come in and do those programs. Um, and then we have some training in LinkedIn. We have tutors for Microsoft Office. Um, we do have some networking sessions, not as many as some clubs do because that's their, their base. Um, so that would be available. Um, and and um, just a wealth of uh, things, a resource. In other words, you can run your job search actually right from our facility. Um, we have resources, uh, materials. We have online uh, databases available, uh, computers available, Wi-Fi is available here. Um, so that maybe give you kind of a, an idea of the whole scope of what we have available. Great. Great. Um, we did have a question from the audience about looking for job clubs, and Jan uh, offered her location to the listener, but uh, one of the things that we are working on trying to do is add all of the job clubs um, offered by all of the various organizations across the state to our service finder on Illinois WorkNet, as well as have them add their particular events and workshops to the list of on the events calendar. So we want to make sure that if you are listening and you have an event or if you have a job club, uh, like Jerome mentioned, uh, he has one for veterans in Joliet, please make sure that that information is added to Illinois WorkNet. And if you need uh, more information on how to do that, I would be happy to uh, share that information about how to set those up with you. Let's uh, move on to our next slide, and let's talk about the benefits of a job club. And Jan, I'm going to let you start here. What are some of the benefits that a, a user of a job club can achieve? You know, I think one of the most important parts of, of uh, participating is remaining positive, energized, and motivated. Um, I find that that I, I cannot comprehend how people can do that unless they belong to a job club or go to some place where there are other people are getting some coaching. Because staying at home alone by yourself trying to do this um, isn't, isn't healthy, but it doesn't give you that energy. And the job search process is actually very demotivating because you don't get positive feedback in the process. So going to someplace else where there are other people, where you're learning something new, where you're sharing, really builds the energy for you to continue this process. Um, I also think it helps you build your confidence. Um, as you meet other people and you're able to start talking about what you do, you can practice it there before you maybe have to go out and do it in a larger group or with an employer. So I think that would probably be the biggest thing that I think um, happens. Great. Jim, what's, what's the deal with collaboration or access to experts? Tell me about a couple of those things. I think I, I, I think it gets back to the the, the sounding board uh, uh, that I, I kind of alluded to before is uh, you know you can collaborate with others on hey uh, maybe you had an interview maybe you had a uh, you you were wanting to try a different approach with individuals uh, or you wanted to learn some success factors that other individuals have had. 
Uh, and that's one of the benefits that you get out. Uh, you know, and all of our presenters, and even those that uh, others bring to the group, uh, make themselves available to share further information. Uh, and that could be, uh, it could be, we could have an, a gentleman talking about uh, uh, interview, uh, how would you answer certain interview questions uh, in some cases. Uh, they have had, hey, this is what they're trying to, this is a behavioral question, and here's what they're trying to get out. Uh, uh, and they will offer that, that expertise even after our meetings. Uh, so that's, that's what the access to experts are. Um, in some cases, uh, we have individuals that our recruiters come to share, hey, th these are some of the pitfalls. So there's... Uh, two opportunities right there within one person. One, they're a recruiter for jobs, so I would want to make sure that they have, uh, you know, you want to have uh, your resume in their hands, uh, and they know about what you're looking for and how, uh, what it is, and also they're sharing ideas that are pitfalls along the process. So you, 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 there's, there's two aspects where you learn from that particular uh, individual. Great, great. Um, one of the things that I know that I've seen as a speaker to both of your organizations, I, I come in and I share information from my expertise level, and then they um, they ask questions and they find out and maybe learn something that they might not have thought about. And maybe it becomes a matter of causing that brainstorm to start acting when they are sitting there listening to me going, oh, I didn't know I could do that. And it varies because you might come in or out of the job search calendar of events and not really know. and like. One of you said a, a few moments ago, it may have been a long time since you were in job search mode. And the way people look for a job now is so much different than it used to be. So understanding, knowing, knowing that you're not alone makes a, a whole lot of difference everywhere. Yeah, Dee, I would just add to that. You have accountability listed here. Um, one of the things, some group, some places have accountability groups, which are you meet weekly, you set a goal, and then you have to tell people what you achieved the week after that. But some just have accountability when you're talking to folks and have things to do. So when someone's working with one of our coaches, usually when they finish a session, they will say, well, why don't you get this, this, and this done? and then we'll meet next week or we'll meet in two weeks. And that can happen in a job club also um, so that you actually have something you're supposed to do and you have a time where you're supposed to do it. It, makes, it keeps people moving forward. Yes, very definitely. Um, let's move on to the next slide. One of the things that I found as I was doing a little bit of research for this webinar is that there is a huge difference of a success rate if you participate in a job club versus not participating. And if you look at it, 74% higher landing rate with using a job club than if you don't. So let's talk about, um, Jim, let's talk about one of these points here. About 80% of jobs are found through networking. Uh, well, yes, yes, and and you know, I, I think the the uh, the reason this success factor, the the seventy four four percent, exists, is because people feel energized uh, when they go to job clubs, and what they do is they not only do they feel energized, they they're ready to go out and implement one of those aspects that they may have learned. They may have learned it from uh, networking amongst the participants. They may have learned the tip from the speaker, 
or they may have found out about a job lead. Uh, and I think it's that, that energizing factor that helps with that to talk about. Now, 80% of the jobs are found through networking. And uh, there, the, the, the other aspect, 20%, are, are posted jobs that are out there, whether on the Internet or, you know, uh, you know on the various job boards. Uh, but there are a lot of unhidden jobs that companies are just thinking about an opportunity. Or maybe it's something that's not published, uh, that they have a job search that is out there. And there are quite a few, 80% of those that are out there. Right. Jan, what do you think about this chart here? Well, no, I think it's I think it's a fabulous chart, and I think it's pretty amazing, and it really speaks to the idea that you don't want to do this alone. You really want to get um, consults from other people. You really want to partner with people. You want to meet people. Um, we talked a little bit about increasing your networking just because there are more people there that are in different places. Um, but you'll learn about uh, new opportunities from the people that are there. You'll learn about new industries that are there. You'll learn about new businesses that have opened. Um, you'll be able to get information from other people. So it's not so different if you're trying to, I don't know, let's say you're trying, you have a new medical issue and you're trying to find who to go to. Um, to be referred to. Well, that works in this setting also. Uh, and people forget it's the same thing they do every day when they're looking for referrals. So this is a great place to get a referral of a neighbor who knows somebody at the company you're looking at or a friend learned that some new company was moving in the community um, or just building a relationship with a totally new person that you wouldn't have met anywhere else and you might go out to coffee and some of our people actually end up being friends, <laughs> yes, um, yes. which is pretty amazing. So, so I, I can see why you know the the numbers are astounding, really, when you look at it. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that there are places to go to get assistance and how helpful it can be. So this is this is great to let people know this. Yes, now we had a we had a question earlier from the audience, it said, are job clubs successful for high school students working on post-secondary goals of employment? Do you have a lot of young people that show up at the job clubs ever? You know, we don't at Career Resource Center. Typically, it would be college graduates and above. Um, we've had some inquiries a couple of times about do we help high school students figure out you know, what degrees they want to take or what direction they're going to go in. Um, well, you know, we could probably have a dialogue, but it, we're really focused on those folks who are ready to go to work um, and, and in that process. So I'm not sure that works. I don't know. Jim, what do you think? Well, we have had uh, periodically uh, some, some, some folks uh, attending the group that were uh, just graduated high school and getting into the marketplace, uh, or uh, a couple individuals that were looking for some help uh, with their GED. Uh, and we helped them, and uh, because we have access to other uh, community services, uh, we're able to point them in a direction where they can get some, some further assistance along those lines. Uh, I think the, the, the other thing that I would, I would like to see uh, more uh, a stronger participation from recent college grads. We do know that they are out there. We do have a, 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 a few that, that show up. The, the, the thing that a job club has to offer to a recent college grad who's trying to get out there into the marketplace is we have uh, a lot of uh, middle to upper level managers that are willing to be mentors to help new entrants into the marketplace. And, uh, and I, I talk about one of those takeaways, you know, being a mentor to help an individual uh, just starting out their career uh, 
it would would be a tremendous asset. And it's a very non-threatening asset because they, they're looking to offer their help, their experience. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right, here's the big question. It's tough to choose. And I know that up in the northeast corner of Illinois, like from Rockford to Joliet and if you go northeast that way, there's a lot of choices for people. Some of them have left. I, I, I had a list at one time of about 40 different job clubs. And as I was doing some research for this webinar, many of them no longer exist. And I think that's because some of the, um, well, we're down to a four point something unemployment rate. So some of the people have been hired back. Some of the people have just given up hope but there, there are still some job clubs around. Um, so when you want to pick a job club to choose, what do you, what, what's the right thing to do? And, and what, do you, what do you look at for a job club? So do you, shall I just jump in on that, Dee? Sure thing. Yeah, this is Jim Leahy at Career Resource Center. You know, I think it's a good idea to try out a few. Um, I think when you finish, you know, you're, it, we'll talk in a little bit about how many and how often. Um, and I think it is difficult, but I think you should go try it out, and maybe you try someplace out more than once. Um, but what I would say is, if I was going to go, I'd want to feel like the place was warm, welcoming, and these were people who were positive, um, and, and you know that I felt comfortable with. Um, there's lots of other reasons. Certainly, you know, you've got a list here. You know, if it's too far away, maybe you don't want to go there. But I think it's much more important to find a place where you're comfortable, where you feel that they are actually going to help you out, uh, where you feel like a person, not a number. And most of these places are very specific with that. I mean, that's just support in itself where, you know, you have a name, people want to say hello. Um, but also you want to make sure that they aren't just do-good places where they make you feel good. You want to make sure that you're gaining some knowledge and learning some new things and getting um, the push or the encouragement to be active in the process. Because there are some places where they they, you know, they're good, they're great, you feel good when you leave, but you really haven't accomplished anything. So if that's help, I would think those would be the reasons. Good. You know, uh, this is Jim, and I'd like to add to that because, you know, Jan is right on. Uh, I would look at these, these, these clubs as you, take a, as you take a look at the, uh, the territory that's out there. Utilize this as a in addition, an extension of your job search. Uh, so if you were to pick a proximity that gets another group of individuals engaged in your search, it's worth your while. I would give you a for instance. If you were within the Tri-City area, being Geneva, St. Charles, Batavia, Tug would be a good choice. Then I would take a look at another group of individuals that probably don't come to our Tug group would be the, a group over in Palatine or a group in Arlington Heights. Uh, that would be another area where you could go to and it would get another group of people could be 30, 40 people that are helping you find, a, find your next opportunity. Maybe you go down to Plainfield. Uh, there's, there's, there's a group down in Plainfield that meets. Um, so that would be one other area uh, that I would take a look at. Uh, to, go to, the, to go to a group, uh, uh, go to several groups in a particular town may not get you into the same, may, you may be seeing the same folks all the time. In which case, you know, what I would do is I would pick out that one I felt warm and really warm, the individuals are, are beneficial and they are pushing me. 
uh, to go after that opportunity. So. so that brings us to our next point of how often should somebody go to a job club? You could, you could potentially spend all week at a job club somewhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you, know, you know, you need to take a look at strategically how do you integrate this within uh, uh, your job search. Uh, and I, I think you also want to integrate into your job search areas of opportunity where you can engage with individuals or in locations that have companies come into resources. Uh, you know, I, I think those are a particular, those could be association meetings. They could be uh, a trade show that's out there that you go to attend. And, you know, you want to integrate these in amongst attending job clubs. And I view those as an area of opportunity to further your network. So in terms of numbers, am I jumping right in here, Dee? Sure. sure. Or Jim, are you finished? <laughs> yes, yes, I am. <laughs> okay. No, um, you know what, I think, it's, I think a lot of people, sometimes when they do find out about this, they actually overuse uh, job clubs or networking groups. Um, and so finding that balance is really a great thing, and I think it's really important when you talk about how many or how often. Um, I had a guy come to an evening networking session we had here several years ago, and he said, oh, I'm so exhausted. This is my fifth networking group today. And I oh, just looked at him, goodness. and I'm... I'm looking at them saying five, and one. I mean, why would you do that? It isn't effective. So you want to balance it all out with the other things you have to do. So there's so much to do in your job search. I would certainly find a home base, you know, someplace where you're comfortable, and I might find a couple of extra networking meetings that maybe not our job clubs, and look around, um, and certainly do other things, as you mentioned, the associations. Um, and as Dee said, sometimes you can use a job club every week or all day if they're open, um, and it might be a base. Uh, but I would find a, a, at least one that you kind of are really comfortable with and then take advantage of a few services elsewhere or belong to two. I think three might even be too many, depending upon what they do. Right. And, you know, you can always pick them, like Jim was saying, based on a location, where is the area that you want to work? Where is the area that you live? Where is the area that you might find the best networking? And it, you may end up going to several before you find the perfect ones. And doing uh, one of the things that I've discovered is I need to do effective networking. And that's what you have to look at for your job search as well is, what's going to be the most effective use of your time, your, your limited resources, because if you're on unemployment, your resources have diminished. And so using your time and your energy in the most effective manner possible. Yeah, and that's um, really important is the time, the time piece, because you can do too much or not enough, and you really have to choose where, what's going to be effective for you. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about in-person or virtual. Now, I know in southern Illinois, there are not as many locations available to you as there are in this northeast quadrant of the state, because just because of population or lack of facilities um, in other parts of the state. So. Would you want to do an in-person, or could you use some resources virtually? And one of the resources that I definitely want to mention is that, that on LinkedIn, we do have the virtual job club network. And within that job club network, we post articles, we ask questions, we share links to resources that we find. 
we have um, just people in there that you might want to ask a question. If you're not sure about doing something, and maybe you live 40 miles from the closest in-person job club, get on the group, ask your question, and somebody will give you an answer or a resource. And then maybe once a week or once every other week, you make that drive to the facility so that you can do the in-person. So what do you think about, what about our um, list here, Jan? You know what, it's interesting because I, when I first looked at that, I wasn't thinking in, the, in this way. So um, in-person is always better than anything else. However, with the busyness that we all have today, it's very hard sometimes to have that opportunity to do everything in person. And I was just thinking uh, when you mentioned this, this group that you have, LinkedIn is a wonderful tool where you will do a lot more virtual, or, and it might not be a job club, but if you join groups on LinkedIn that are related to your business or whatever, you then have the ability to send a message to or talk to anybody that's in that group. They don't have to be on your own network. Um, and so that's a way to expand, um, you know, connecting. So they're not job clubs, but it's still a, a virtual way of networking with other folks. Um, I think if, if you do the the in person, I think you get more energized. I think De that you definitely. can meet people and then say, let's, and you find, you, you know, you may go to some place, there are 30 people and there's only one person that you connect with. That's perfectly fine. That's the person you want to go have coffee with and figure out whether you can help each other out. So, um, you know, but you're right. If, they're, if you're remote or if you don't have time, there are other ways to do it. Right. And if you just need, if you're in the middle of the night and you're working on your resume, you can't go to a job club in the middle of the night. There aren't any that meet then. So reaching out to the different job search groups on the Internet can help you solve some of those problems. Um, getting Bouncing feedback. I know uh, in the group one day a woman asked the question, all right, this is what's happened. I've been offered two jobs and blah, 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 and what do you think? And she had answers from five people within 24 hours. So it gave her that ability to bounce her idea, use it as a sounding board, like we've talked about with some of the other things, and hopefully she was able to make the right decision based on her situation. So having that information always helps. And I invite all of you listening to join the job club. It is uh, limited to Illinois residents or HR professionals from companies who hire individuals in Illinois. So if you aren't already a member of the virtual job club, please uh, ask to become a member. I will check it out and make sure that you're added to the group. And then start participating. And if you happen to be a workforce professional on the call, watch the questions and see if there's something that you can offer as assistance for those users of the group. Let's move to the next slide. We're going to talk a little bit about resources. Now, we talked about job clubs, but we also have a list of other areas where you might be able to network. And let's talk about some of these. I'm going to talk about Chambers of Commerce because I'm a big proponent of Chambers of Commerce, not only for business but for community members because they have, in some cases, they have community memberships where you can join the chamber for um, a reduced rate and then you show up at the networking events and you go to multi-chamber events where you can reach out to other businesses carry your handbill in your purse or have a, a networking business card just so that you can share that information out. But make sure that you're using the resources in your community. And a lot of times chambers of commerce will have a job board where their members post jobs. And if you check those out, that's another tool that you can use. 
So Jan, do you want to talk about a couple of these on the list? Oh, absolutely. You, um, I, you know, the next one on the list is the alumni associations. If you graduated from a university, definitely find your alumni association. And that's just another connection. People who you know, who, who even you don't know, who might have graduated from the same school are more willing to be helpful because you have a connection already. You can talk about the fact that you were there. And they have social events sometimes. They have business events sometimes. And sometimes they have smaller groups. I know one of the universities has a north side group and a city group. Um, and so you will already have a bond uh, with them when you meet with them, and they might be willing to mentor you. They might work in a different place so they could give you a lead into a company um, or just, you know, be a partner in helping you through the process. So I like that one uh, a lot. I also think that uh, the business seminars, you know, it's a great place. You can They have a topic you're going to go to. Um, you can just sit in. You might meet people there, but you'll learn some new things when you go to them. So if you have a subject matter that you're interested in, you can just Google it and see if there's an event nearby you. Um, you can always look in uh, cranes or other places, um, or even in, you know, you can go online virtually on whatever's going on in your community and find out if there's something related to your business or even something you're passionate about that isn't related to your business. You'll meet other folks, um, and that really can be helpful. I want to mention the trade associations on the PowerPoint presentation in front of the image, and it's a little bit hard to see, but it is a link to Illinois WorkNet for our student and trade associations page. A lot of times you can belong to your association that's in your career field, and they will have learning opportunities and training opportunities and networking events where you can use some of the skills that you've learned in a job club or through Illinois WorkNet to try to help yourself network your way into another job. And remember, 80% of the jobs found these days are through networking. So check on that. Um, Jim, what about what, colleges, what, business seminars? What, 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 what I would suggest is <clears throat> if we take a look at the the trade associations, I would, I would uh, venture out and take a look at who is participating, what type of trade associations are coming in the town. Uh, typically, McCormick Center will publish a, a, a calendar of events. Uh, uh, the the Allstate Arena has a calendar of events. Uh, to mention a couple, uh, I forget Donald Lee Stevenson over in Rosemont. They they have trade shows that are coming in. These are areas where you can walk the show. They're free entrance uh, to get into the show, uh, and you can walk the show and talk to the participants, talk to the vendors uh, that are there uh, to see if they possibly they may be hiring. Um, if you take a look at the colleges and universities, many college universities offer seminars. Uh, and in particular instances, they're offering the seminars to try to <laughs> encourage people to uh, look at them for graduate work. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm aware uh, the University of Chicago, their uh, management school, uh, uh, graduate program, they put on roundtables downtown at the Gleacher Center. And these roundtables are, they could have a sales roundtable or uh, a consultant roundtable, a financial roundtable. And it's open to anybody who would, who would like to venture down. Uh, in this particular instance, at these roundtables, they, half of the folks uh, out there are employed. They're, it's, it's after after work hours, and they're just trying to catch a uh, presentation that could be put on by a, a subject matter expert. And it also uh, allows you that opportunity to engage in a conversation with other individuals and potential 
uh, individuals who are looking to hire people. Uh, so those would be some, uh, some other areas uh, to take a look at. Take a look at what's happening at, within your park districts. The park districts offer seminars and your libraries offer seminars where you have that opportunity to engage with others and also learn something out of the, out of the process. And last on our list is meetup groups. Um, the meetup groups have different topics. And sometimes, uh, for example, I go to one that's, that's a group that, that's called Never Eat Alone. Uh, and, it, and it's just a big group of people, and you network. And there have been people in job search mode show up there, and they get to practice their elevator, their elevator pitch, and they get to practice talking to strangers. So if you're uncomfortable um, meeting new people, try something that's, that's a little bit out of your realm of comfort, but go to a group that has something to do with your interests. And then just make sure that you're telling everybody. Um, we have a question from the audience. How do you set up an accountability group? Jan, would you like to answer that? Um, <laughs> you know what? It's, a, it's an interesting question because lots of people do it different ways. Um, typically, an accountability group would be a group of job seekers together who are going to help each other through that process. Um, but it has to be, it will only function if you actually set goals, very specific ones about what you're going to accomplish for the week, and you meet every week for a period of time and you help people, you help hold each other accountable. In other words, if they say they're going to accomplish something and next week they didn't, then you ask them what got in the way of that. Um, you can do that by meeting people at a job club. Some job clubs or centers will help build accountability groups. I mean, you can build your own accountability groups. Um, my experience with them is sometimes they don't function very well because it becomes a group of people who are just complaining about the issues that are going on rather than focusing on the goals that they need to be doing. Um, I like accountability groups who actually have a facilitator who can keep people on track. Um, but there, it does work. Uh, it's wonderful to have other people working with you. You can invite people. I mean, if you meet two or three people at different events and you can say, would you like to join an accountability group and we can each help each other stay focused. Um, so, you know, that would kind of be my suggestion. And a little bit of that um, in the business world is called a mastermind group where you have people thinking at a high level and saying, okay, what are you going to do next? And sometimes it's just called a goals group. I mean, if you get, you know, stuck on the word accountability, you know, what are your goals and what would you like to achieve and how are you going to do it, and then have you done it? Right, right. F F Jim, do you have anything to add? Well, I, I think the, uh, you know, uh, as Jan alluded to, sometimes it's a uh, – the group evolves into a touchy-feely uh, type of environment. Uh, I think one of the aspects why you want to have an accountability group is uh, if I've done something wrong, I really would like to have somebody tell me what I did wrong and how can I, help, how can I improve so I don't do that again. Uh, and, and sometimes that's difficult. But in an accountability group, you're, you're, you're doing a favor by holding somebody accountable uh, and telling them, hey, I, I think you may have approached it. Uh, this may have been a better approach for you. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, you know, a, a individual asked me for some help, and uh, they wrote a cover letter that really was not a not very impressive. In fact, it, in their very first paragraph, what they illustrated is, I don't have the skill sets, but I'm still interested in your company. <laughs> and I pointed out to them, I says, do you realize you've, you've told them why they shouldn't be reading your resume? 
you might want to take a look at it from this particular angle. And, you know, a day later they came back. They said, you know, I went, I went back, reread that. Those words of advice resonated with me. I was about ready to do the exact same thing with another cover letter and another company. You stopped me from doing that, and I've recrafted it, and, you know, it, it's a better, it came out positively for them. So uh, that, I think you need to have that come, come back to you. Uh, they need to be able to say, the, the members of your group need to be able to be honest with you and help you in the process. Yes. So let's recap here, because we're coming up on, on an hour's worth of time here. Job connection clubs, or job clubs, or job groups, are small groups of people across America who meet regularly to talk candidly about job searching and career advancement with the goal of supporting the success of all members. There's power among peers. And the one point that was in this ABC News article was give back if you are working. Um, I know it's unusual for people to come back to an organization. Jan, have you had any experience with people coming back and helping? Uh, come back and helping here after we help them? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we have over 100 volunteers who help us make this happen. And I would say a quarter of them are candidates who have been here. So they might become presenters. They might facilitate networking sessions. They might come on Tuesday nights because they're working in the daytime and just help out with reception. Um, so, um, I, you know, and, and they can help out in other ways, too. They can network with some of the people. Um, certainly they can help support the organization. Um, it, it is wonderful where you're, you know, you're helping the next guy or the next gal, you know, paying it forward kind of. Right, right. Jim, have you had anybody come back and help? Uh, well, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Not only have they come back to help the volunteer, but they've, they've come back. Uh, most recently I had a, a gentleman that uh, he was a CPA and he bought a firm. He was going through the job search process with Tug. Uh, and he came back just recently. He says, "Hey, I'm looking for an office manager uh, uh -huh. within the group." And you know, we have that same issue. That I mean, not issue, but we have that same thing happen. We had a guy who got a job, and actually, he then bought the company, and he was the owner after he, you know, after several years. So it was probably eight years later. And then he sent us, told us that he now owns the business, and he wanted to find candidates to work for him. So Excellent. it's it's a it's nice to see that full circle. That's great. That that's that's the rewarding thing. Yeah. Well, I would love I would I'm so thankful that Jim Clink of Tug Career Services and Jan Leahy of the Career Resource Center in Lake Forest were able to join us today and share their expertise. I hope you all were thankful that they were joining us today as well. Please take a moment to complete our questions here. And last parting words, Jim, what would you like to say to our audience? Well, I, I would encourage them to get out and uh, look at these areas of opportunity uh, to further their networking. Uh, look, look to see if there is a job club uh, within their area, and I, I wish them the, the best in their job search uh, to find that next opportunity. And Jan, you know, I think my my biggest thing is don't do this alone. Don't ever do this alone. Find a group, find a career center, find some mentors so that you have people that you're working with where you can get feedback, where you can build energy. And there are many places out there that can help you. Some are just one-nighters, uh, but some of them are groups. And I think you can just go onto Google and just, you know, say, 
job search club or job search assistance in my community, and there may be a broader spectrum there. But um, I also uh, uh, wish you all tremendous success. Uh, you, in most cases, you will be successful. It, it's just a matter of the hard work that has to go into it, and it is a lot of work. So I do empathize because I know how difficult it is. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. I, we appreciate your time and energy. Have a great rest of your day. And if you want to watch this recording again or share this with any friends, we will be posting this on IllinoisWorkNet.com in our news and updates section. Thanks, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.